just been to B&Q to get a to get a cheap hammer because I left lost lost left one on site, lost it somewhere. And they said, "Do you want a free donut, Krispy Kreme donut?" You bet your bollocks to a barn dance. I want a free donut. <laughs> Um, right, yeah, so I'm fitting an aerial in a loft again on this one, but I'm using what's called a mini log, um, log periodic aerial, but it's just a mini size one, because it's a really small loft, but we're in a signal area where I can get away with it. So I thought, yeah, it's a quick little video to show you how, well, how I fit it and what they are, all right? Let's get up there. Okay, so we're up in the loft, as you can see, and I've been up here and tested the signal, so using a mini log periodic aerial and this is it tiny little thing isn't it it's about well foot and a half not even that from you know from the butt end to the very tip it's tiny so that's ideal for using in confined spaces like this loft for instance um you've got to be in a an half decent signal area to get away with a, an aerial in the loft anyway um, let alone something as small as this, because obviously the gain on an area like this isn't as high as a full full size area. I can't can't remember the figures off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, where I am geographically now, it's yeah, it's a pretty good signal signal area. So I've been up here, tested the signal with my meter, you know, moved it around, and I've got my uh, analyzer here, and I can see those signal levels are going to be fine, absolutely fine just for the aerial itself, connected directly into the cable that the builders have fitted, or the Sparkies, uh, into this new build house. It's, well, it's new build-ish, about two or three years old. Um, connect the cable directly to that. It's only feeding the one point in the sit room and it'll be fine. So no boosters needed, so it couldn't be simpler. This is really quite an easy one, hence why I thought I'd get it on video. So yeah, I moved around. I've got the general area of where it's gonna point. And so if it's gonna go about there, which it is, round about there, I made a mark up on the joist where I'm going to mount the loft mount there and so the pole will be here and the area will be mounted like I just showed you there so I'm going to get that fixed up on the joist now for these sort of jobs I've got my little Milwaukee impact driver but it's a 12 volt but for an impact it's tiny again you know it's really not not big at all and that slots in my tool bag really handy so using the I've got a magnetic bit magnetic uh, impact bit holder which allows me to hold it just go one hand and get that in Let's get the other screws in. And there we are. Great little bit of kit, that. So I've got a much heavier duty impact driver than the Makita one. But it is quite heavy. And that is as small as it gets, really, for an impact driver. So it's really handy. So that is the uh, loft mount mounted. So straighten out that pole. Up there, it's fine. So now, we'll get the actual aerial mounted onto it and get that lined up. So, I'll just assemble the aerial. Now, hopefully you can see all this. Let's see. So one screw, so one bolt even, in there. So yeah, I... As you've probably seen in other videos, I only ever use log periodic aerials and this is just a mini version which I save for when I'm in a real tight spot and normally I just put the aerial outside. But in some cases, if you can get it in the loft, it's a lot easier. You know, it's protected from the elements. It's lush, it's pretty wet outside and windy. So I thought let's try and get it in the loft if we can. 
obviously it won't fit an aerial in the loft if the signal's just going to be no good and be at more expense to the customer when it would be perfectly fine going outside. But this will be the same sort of price and I've tested it and it'll be absolutely feasible to stick it in the loft. So I'll get that attached to the pole. You see that a bit better now? Just finger tight and connect it back to my meter. Have a look at what we're looking at signal wise. And yeah, just fine tune it, move it around to its optimum spot. Which is slightly up a bit. Right there. So then, it's a 10mm ratchet. Span it. Zip that up. So always looking at the meter to see what the meters, see what the signal readings are. That's it, perfect reading. Couldn't be simpler that. So that is aligned and fixed and ready to use. There is, uh, what's it called, boarding down in this loft. Um, yes, the aerial's gone right, so it's, it is close to the loft hatch, but there's still plenty of space behind the camera behind here that he can use, the customer can use for storage. This is the optimum place for the aerial and he's fine with it going there, so. Yeah, so let's disconnect that meter and now I'm going to connect the actual TV cable that's built into the wall straight to the back of the aerial and that'll be it, yeah. So, right, let's get that connected and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute, okay? Okay, so just prepping the cable now, so I've got one of these cable strippers. Just clamp it on, spin it one way, spin it the other way. You've got a perfectly prepared cable. Just make sure none of the braid is touching the actual copper core. I don't know if you can see that. To those in the know, this is like telling them how to suck eggs, but those who don't know, that could be quite helpful. You never want the braid of the cable touching the core of the cable. The braid does have its, does have its uses. But I won't bore you with what they are in this episode. But for your average DIYer who's trying to fit a coax plug or an F connector, more than likely the screw on F connectors, you don't have the braid. You can keep the braid, but normally just fold it back. But um, you haven't got to chop it off, but you do not have the braid touching the copper core under any circumstances, okay? Not dangerous, it's not going to blow up or anything, but it uh, will affect the signal dramatically. And in some cases, short it out if you are sending power up it for a preamplifier, but again, that's for another video. So, there we are, that goes on there. You've got this little tidy boot. Slots on the bottom. Not that it's needed because it's inside, you know, there's no water going to get in here. But that is it. That's lined up, that's ready to go. Right, favorite thing is to leave my tools behind. Um, hammers, normally, hence why I went to B&Q and got a, got a new hammer and got a bonus free donut. What a day, what a time to be alive. Right. That's it, I'm gonna get my stuff down and test some signals and tune in the TV. So I'll see you down there. Okay, so you can, hopefully you can see me there. Just gonna test the signals now down at the point. See what it says. It's strange really, cause, uh, that's better. This customer actually had another firm local to the area out and uh, 
one of their engineers came out, looked in the loft and said, no, you can't get an aerial signal. You can't get an aerial signal here, you'll have to have uh, free sat. Uh, there was already a dish on the side of the house from the previous people, so it is a quite a new build, but there's already been one, uh, one resident here, and they had Sky, Sky Q, and the engineer that came the other day saw that dish and thought, I'll just utilise that, so we sold him an LNB, a quad LNB, so it could be used for free sat, and sold him a free sat box, and it doesn't work very well. Um, the guy isn't overly savvy with all stuff like this, he just wants to turn on his TV and it work. Press BBC One and he gets one. So basically you get free if you work on the TV. So this engineer sold him FreeSat and it's too complicated for him, plus when it is working it breaks up so the signal's not right. So yeah, so not sure why that engineer did that. Um, I know the company, and but I'm not going to say, it's not fair, but yeah, it's to why he said no you can't get an aerial signal in this loft. Um, it's a bit strange, or you can't have an aerial in the loft, because I've just done that, as you've just seen, really quickly. But there we are, you know, there we go, so, signal, yeah, look at that, don't know if you can see that. Basically, I'm right smack bang where I want to be, um, decibels wise, decibels wise, carrier to noise wise, 28 dB carrier to noise. That's going to work beautifully. So I'm going to just stick a fly lead now in from here into his TV and turn it in for him. Okay, there we are, all done. 155 channels found, which is what you'd expect around here. Sorted. And that's, well, yeah, it's just what the customer wanted, you know, he just wanted to have it old school where you just turn on the TV, press a channel and it works, you know, he doesn't, it's not into fancy satellite and all that sort of thing. Almost 20 years. Oh, yeah. um, I'm sure there's going to be points where I'm going to be tearing what I've got my hair out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm... Let's check out HD. Yeah, I mean, are you going to address the floor ceiling height issues here? Yes, it's one of the sort of booms and the sale on, of the property, so... All done. Quite simple. Um, yeah, well, actually, that one couldn't have been easier. So, yeah, little quick video showing, more interested in showing you the, the mini log. Um, don't use them often, but they can come in handy in real small spaces like today. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, and the usual thing, if you like the video today, please like it. Um, it helps the channel to grow. And hit the subscribe button, all right? Uh, yeah, trying to get as many subscribers as we can. It's quite slow on the uptake, but, you know, I can't get videos out all the time. I'm just too busy to stop and record, but... Yeah, thanks for watching and like and subscribe. Cheers.